So thank you for the introduction <laughs> and um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to express my um, sincere gratitude to the Poetry Innovation Partnership for giving me such a great opportunity to share my research here. Today, I'll be talking about the effect of barn sanitation practices on the gut microbiology of commercial broiler chickens. And to start with, our research focuses on the chicken gut health and the chicken gut microbiome. So what is microbiome? If you look it up on a textbook, it's going to tell you that microbiome refers to the combined genetic material of the microorganisms in a particular environment, for example, in the gut, in the soil, or in the water body. And yeah, I know this might sound a bit arbitrary. So in short, I conclude it this way. So what we're interested in is, is that who being where in the gut doing what and why is that? So previously limited by our knowledge to the gut microbes, conventional cultivation could only recover only um, 30 to 6% of the gut microbes. And that limits our understanding of the overall gut microbial structure. And thanks to the development of high throughput technology, sequencing technology and DNA sequence databases, we are now able to sequence the total DNA from the gut and use database to answer these questions. And the two technology that um, we use in this presentation are first the 16S rRNA amplicon sequencing, which focuses only on bacterial taxonomic, taxonomic purposes, and that answers the question, who is there in the gut? Whereas the second one, shark and metagenomic sequencing, are able to offer comprehensive understanding of the total genetic potential of all microbes, and that answers the question, what these microbes are capable for. And with these powerful tools, we can apply our study on um, different contexts. For example, we can assess how the chicken gut microbiome was affected by management, feed composition, feed additives, and age, and so on. And why do we want to evaluate the effect of barn sanitation practices on the chicken gut microbiome? Probably you're very familiar with, this, uh, with the scenarios in these pictures. As we can see, the way that we raise chicken today is extremely different from 80 years ago. We used to house a handful of birds in the backyard, let them run, and wait for their eggs. However, today, broiler chickens are raised in commercial barns like this with highly controlled temperature, humidity, ventilation, feed, and water supply, and also with very limited access to their parent flock and the outside world. And that's how much we have changed the way that the chicken have been living for millennia. Speaking of change, the chickens nowadays are different too. Modern broilers are believed, to, uh, are believed to be domesticated from jungle fowl thousands of years ago. After decades of selection for feed efficiency and growth rate, broiler chickens are now highly efficient meat producing animals, and they're just amazing. I believe that you're very familiar with this picture uh, by Dr. Zudoff. As you can see, in the 60s, it took the broilers three months to reach the market weight of four pounds. Now it takes about only a month or sometimes even less. You see, not only did we change the way that the chickens have been living for millions of years, we have also greatly changed their genetics by commercial breeding. Wait a minute. We have focused on the living environments and enhancing the uh, and improving the chicken genetics for a long time, but we might have forgotten something. Yes, the microbes. In fact, microbes and the microbes and the hosts have been co-evolved for millions of years that they are highly adapted to each other. For example, take the human, for example, some scientists suggested that the diversity of our gut, uh, our gut microbes are being depleted from generation to generation, and that may be a result of modern practices that disturb our ancestral relationship to the gut microbes. For example, we eat processed food, we have antibiotic exposure, and we keep social distancing. And that's very different from what our ancestors do, or what our ancestors did. Ancestors did. And there are evidence showing that the decrease of uh, microbial diversity might lead to diseases such as obesity, childhood asthma, and inflammation bowel disease, and so on. This hypothesis may also be applied on the modern chicken farming. See, one important source of these um, commensal microbes 
um, in the wild are their hens or their parent flock. But think about our production system. Chicks are hatched separately from their hens in the hatchery, and then they ship directly to the farm. This greatly limits the commands of microbial transmission from the parent flock to the chicks. In fact, in chicken research, it has been suggested that the commensal microbes contribute to the host nutrient utilization, which microbes can ferment undigested feed to improve feed efficiency, competitively exclude pathogens. For example, the commensals can compete with salmonella and therefore contribute to pathogen defense and help program host immune responses. For example, produce structuring fatty acid to modulate host gut immunity and therefore improve gut health. And this concept had caught the industry's attention. Today, if you go to the market, you'll see a lot of probiotic and prebiotic products that have been developed, hoping to help the birds to build a homeostatic gut environment. And currently, one of the challenges that the poultry industry has is to control pathogens like Clostridium perfringens affecting um, chicken health and foodborne pathogens like Salmonella and Campylobacter affecting human health. Since now prophylactic use of uh, antibiotics are highly restricted in um, poultry farming, alternatives to maintain chicken gut health and producti productivity are highly warranted. As mentioned, modern boiler production separates the hens and the eggs that deprives a very important source of hen-derived microbiome transmission to the newly hatches. And many parts of the world allow reused chicken litter in production. Therefore, many studies looked at using recycled litter, hoping that it can help bring back the early life commensal exposure. They found that reused litter had an impact on the chicken early microbiota development, although the effects were not very persistent. One research found that recycled litter increased the predominance of, um, of a bacterium called Fecalobacterium which is a butyrate producer in the Sika for both young and mature birds. However, it was also found that the recycled litter may lead to gut inflammation. With that being said, recycled litter may have a worse effect on the chicken productivity. But most importantly, in Canada, boiler producers are not allowed to use recycled litter during production. That makes these studies not very applicable here in the North. In practice, water wash and full disinfection are widely used. <clears throat> According to the Chicken Farmers of Canada, chicken barns are required a full sanitation with disinfection at least once a year. Producers can have their barns water washed between flocks. Of course, some people may think that the cleaner the better. Perhaps fully disinfect the barns between every flock will help promote, um, will help promote chicken health. Oh, well, apparently um, my wife thinks the same way, especially after COVID, that she uses the disinfection wipe to clean everything after grocery shopping. But is it true? Is it right? Yes, it may be true that chemical disinfecting are effective in removing pathogens, but it may also exclude the good bugs from the previous flock. So to disinfect or not, that is a question. Currently, there are very few studies globally, none in the North America that compares these two cleaning practices and their effects on the chicken gut microbiome. So the ultimate goal of the project is to understand how barn cleaning practices affect the chicken gut microbiology and the microbial functionality, as well as the host response to provide scientific evidence to our broiler production. To do so, <clears throat> a big animal trial was performed as a crossover design comparing full disinfection versus water wash treatment between flocks. So we did our study on seven similarly constructed barns for a total of four flocks per barn. And the animal trial was conducted on the commercial production setting. And um, that resulted in 14 production flocks assigned to each treatment, as we can see from the table. More specifically, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> More specifically, for the full sanitation, we try to uh, we try to keep the barn as clean as possible on the production level. In this case, after removal of the used litter, a commercial chemical disinfectant was applied, followed by multiple times of water rinse and fresh litter placement. And as for water washing barns, we removed the used litter. The chicken house was then water washed, followed by fresh litter placement. Chickens from both treatments were raised in the same manner by the chicken producers with the same handling crew. 
At day seven and at day 30, chickens from each barn were randomly selected. Sequel content were then collected for, um, for gut microbiota analyses, pathogen detection and quantification, as well as short-chain fatty acid analyses. Let's have a look at what we have found. Of course, we care most about the chicken performance. Um, at day 32 before processing, chicken producers recorded the average body weight and mortality rate for each flock. From the 28 flocks we studied, the water wash group showed compar comparable flock body weight and uh, mortality rate to the full disinfection group, suggesting that reduced use of chemical disinfectants did not lead to compromised flock performance. And that's very important um, message for the, for the producers. And to examine foodborne pathogens, we try to use specific media to see if we can cultivate or revive Salmonella and Campylobacter from the Cecal digesta. Here, a current score is defined as the pathogen positive birds divided by the total birds sampled in the same barn. For example, if we have three out of five birds sampled in the same barn were Campylobacter positive, the current score of that barn is 0.6. So the higher the occurrence score is, the more possible that birds come, coming from that barn are positive on, um, on the target pathogen. Um, as a result, during the study, salmonella was not detected in either group, indicating that the water wash treatment did not increase salmonella occurrence in the chicken gut, whereas campylobacter-wise, the water wash group showed significantly lower occurrence score compared to the full disinfection group. How about the whole microbial community, community in the chicken gut? Here's when the 16S RNA sequencing comes to play. So beta diversity, which we see on the left side, is normally used to describe microbial community structures. Here we have used um, both weighted and unweighted, unweighted unifrag PCOA analyses to visualize the differences between the chicken microbiome. I know these graphs are a bit arbitrary to understand. Let me try to explain this way. So imagine this, we compress all the microbes in each chicken gut into one dot and calculate the differences between two different chickens to see how different they are. The, far, the further away they are, the more different. So using this visualiz uh, visualization, we can, we can see the dissimilarity of the gut microbiota of chickens between the two treatments. Our results showed that the cleaning method had a modest but significant effect on the chicken gut microbiome, and then <clears throat> and the different treatments explain about 0.2% of the gut microbiota differences, as we can see here indicated by the R square. Where alpha diversity, which we see on the right side, measures the uh, microbial species richness and evenness, and that is how. And that means um, how many bacteria species are there in the gut and how evenly they distribute. Um, our results suggested that the alpha diversity was not affected by the treatments, um, suggesting that similar microbial species richness and evenness between the chicken sika um, of the um, water wash barns and the full disinfection barns. Since we found that the treatments had a had subtle effect on the overall chicken gut microbiota, we want to know, are there any specific microbes that were affected by the disinfection treatments? So we found that the abundance of a couple of, a couple of bacteria were affected actually by the, by the cleaning method. As we can see here, the water wash groups show higher relative abundance of genus Helicobacter with lower abundance of the family, uh, bacteria family uh, Bacillaceae. Um, bacteria Helicobacter is a genus that can be found in wild birds. So far, very little is known about its role in the chicken gut. Some previous studies found that Helicobacter increased in the chicken gut when polysaccharide hydrolase was added to the diet, and it's associated with higher mature body weight. Whereas um, the bacteria family Bacillaceae wise, they are spore forming bacteria that can survive from harsh physical and chemical conditions. So it is not surprising for us to see them being more predominant in the full disinfection group. Um, we have also used qPCR assay to quantify sequel total bacteria, Campylobacter jejuni, and Clostridium perfringens. As we can see, 
um, while the total amount of sequel bacteria was not affected by the treatment, the water wash group showed nearly one lot lower um, copy numbers of Campylobacter jejuni in the water wash group compared to the full disinfection group. In addition, the abundance of um, Clostridium perfringens were not affected by the treatment. Um, births from both water wash um, and full disinfection group were detected low prevalence of um, Clostridium perfringens in the Zika. Short-chain fatty acid concentrations in the gut are very important indicators for gut homeostasis because they can be used as energy for gut cells directly, and they are also proven to be able to suppress gut inflammation. In the gut, short-chain fatty acids are produced by the gut microbes by fermenting undigested uh, feed, for example, uh, uh, undigested carbohydrates, um, and it is one important aspect for the gut microbes to to participate in modulating the host physiological functions. In our study, we found that the water wash group showed higher total short-chain fatty acids uh, in, in the CICA in comparison to the full disinfection group, specifically acetate, propionate, butyrate concentrations in the water wash group were higher compared to the full disinfection group. In this sense, the results suggested that the water wash treatment may be beneficial to the chicken production by giving the birds healthier and stronger guts. We have also tried to use um, statistic models to see if the short chain fatty acid concentrations were associated with any microbes. As a result, spearmint correlation here showed a series of bacteria associating with the altered short chain fatty acid profile. As shown in a graph, we found that here go back. Sorry, uh, we found that Campylobacter is negatively correlated to total short chain fatty acid. Um, from the total short chain fatty acid, acetate and butyrate concentration. However, whether it is that the increased short chain fatty acid that led to the decrease of Campylobacter, or the decreased Campylobacter led to more short chain fatty acid production that needs to be further studied in the future. And this part of the study had been published on the Applied Envi and Environmental Microbiology. If you're interested, definitely more details can be found there. Although, with the help of 16S RNA amplicon sequencing, we found that the chicken, the chicken gut microbial composition were altered by the barn clean cleaning methods. There are more questions to be answered. That is, yes, we we were only able to find out who was there, but we were not able to answer what they were capable for do, uh, what they were capable for in the chicken gut. So to answer this, uh, to answer this question, we chose a subset of, sa of samples from the animal trial. The chosen barns have been through both full, disinfect full disinfection and water wash, and most of the barns had gone through at least two consecutive cycles of either water wash or full disinfection. And in, uh, and in this study, we included the sequel contents from both day seven and day 30 chickens. We extracted the total, the whole genomic DNA again from their sequel content and submitted the samples to Genome Quebec to perform shotgun metagenomic sequencing. Um, compared to 16S RNA amplicon sequencing, like I mentioned before, the shotgun metagenomic sequencing not only sequenced the taxonomic part of the bacteria, it also sequen it sequences all DNA presented in the sample, which can give us higher resolution on bacteria taxa and more comprehensive understanding on the um, microbial functionality. In other words, with shotgun metagenomics, we can see directly on the microbe, uh, on the microbial genome, and see what their genetic potentials are to help the host or to harm the host. For example, what substrates, what substrates the uh, the microbes can break down, and what products they can synthesize. This flowchart, uh, this flowchart shows um, how we process the metagenomic data, which I will not spend time here to explain because it's a little bit tedious <laughs> and it takes a lot of time. Um, but if you're interested, we can definitely discuss that later. And let's have a look at what we found with shotgun metagenomics. We found that 
Although the cleaning methods did not affect the seven-day chicken gut microbial composition, it did have an impact on day 30. At day 30, the CECO composition of uh, micro, micro, sorry, at day 30, the CECO composition of bacterial species in Barnesiella, Helicobacter, Ruminococcus, and Fecalon bacteria were enriched in a water wash treatment. Well, what does that mean? <laughs> Take-home message is that Fecalobacterium and Ruminococcus were found to produce short-chain fatty acid in the gut and therefore considered as potential beneficial bacteria, and they were enriched in the water wash group. And now let's get to the point of their genetic potential of these microbes. Although the barn cleaning methods did not alter the day seven sequel microbial composition, but what the microbes were capable for was affected. Our results suggested that the water wash derived microbial functionality had enriched pathway linked to cysteine um, synthesis and sucrose degradation, indicating that compared to the full disinfection treatment, the water wash treatment may help improve the um, uh, amino acid and short chain fatty acid production in the young chicken gut microbiome. Interestingly, we found that a bacterial stress response pathway here, the PPGPP metabolism pathway, was enriched in the full disinfection group, which I found is worth mentioning here because, you know, bacteria are smart. When they encounter harsh environment, they tend to minimize their met metabolism and increase their uh, pathogenicity, trying to earn survival advantage. Therefore, the enriched stress um, response pathway we found here in the full disinfection group may indicate that disinfectants used in barn cleaning has stressed the microbes in the barn, and that has subsequently led to change uh, the change of the microbial functionalities in the chicken gut. At day 30, more microbial metabolic pathways were deferred between treatments, we found. Um, water wash group had enriched genetic pathway encoding amino acid, uh, amino acid synthesis, particularly for methionine, lysine, leucine, and branch chain amino acids. It suggested that the water wash derived uh, gut microbiota had greater genetic potential for amino acid production compared to, the full dis to their full dis uh, disinfection counterparts. In addition, a major short chain fatty acid production pathway, this pathway uh, 5100, was also enriched in the water wash group, and that may partially explain the increased short chain fatty acid observed in the day 30 water wash treatment found in the last study. What we have found made us wanted to know what bacteria in the chicken gut microbiota were responsible for these functional changes. So when we crack open the differentially abundant pathway, we found that Helicobacter pylorum was the main contributor to all the enriched metabolic pathways observed in water wash group, and to a lesser extent, that's no clostridium. Although Helicobacter pylorum was proposed to be an opportunistic pathogen, but really there are no direct evidence showing that Helicobacter pylorum colonization leads to either human or chicken diseases. Therefore, the role of this microorganism in the chicken gut needs to be further studied. In addition, in line with the uh, increased Campylobacter jejuni abundance, um, in the full disinfection group, we found that pathways linked to endotoxin synthesis harbored by Campylobacter jejuni were higher in the chicken gut from the full, dis full disinfection group compared to the water wash group. And that may indicate that the full disinfection barn treatment might increase the risk of colon colonization and the subsequent spread of pathogenic Campylobacter. So to summarize, is it the cleaner, the better, maybe not. Um, here are some take-home messages. First, the water wash treatment did not result in compromised flock performance, and that's a very important aspect. 
and, and that's a um yeah. And second, chickens from the water wash barns had less Campylobacter jejuni in their cecal at day 30. And third, barn cleaning methods had an impact on the chicken gut microbiota and cecal shock chain fatty acid concentrations, and that's supported by the gut um, microbial functional capacity. And fourth, um, in the chicken cecal microbiome, Helicobacter pylorum may be a key player driving these observed outcomes in the water wash group. And in the future, <laughs> and in the future, of course, there are more work can be done. For example, we can um, compare full disinfection versus water wash in a more controlled environment like we can do in our um, South Campus research pens that we can have access to more information. Um, for example, uh, we can measure the disinfectant residues after cleaning on the floor or, or on all the surfaces that's related. And also to investigate the role of Helicobacter pylorum, we can orally gavage known amount of these microorganisms and define communities to uh, germ-free chickens to see what happens to, to their gut. Uh, will it affect their performance? Will it affect? Um, 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 will it will it lead to more gut inflammation or and and so on? So this project is supported by the Alberta Livestock and Meat Agency the Alberta chicken producers, the result-driven agricultural research, and the Canadian Poultry Research Council. I would like to thank my supervisor, Dr. Uh, Crawford and Dr. Willing. Also, I would like to thank uh, our collab partner, Dr. McMullen and, and Dr. Ingalls. And of course, all my supportive colleagues from the Willing Lab, the Crawford Lab, the McMullen Lab, and the Poultry Health Services. And again, the Poultry Innovation Partnership to organize this webinar. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Edward, for the great presentation. I should call you Dr. Edward Fan. <laughs> <laughs> so really interesting topic and lots of information provided here. We really appreciate it. So I have got some questions here from our audience and I'm going to start Q&A section. So the first question says, were you able to look at the viral load difference between the groups? Also, were these flocks consistently healthy flock over healthy flock over flock? Did you see any major disease no, disease or not? So um, if I understand the question, um, the question correctly is uh, um, were um did we did, oh, were we able to look at the viral load differences between the groups? Um, sure. So answer this question, um, no, um, because microbiome and virome, they focus on different objects. Uh, microbiome focuses on the microorganism, mainly bacteria, and um, vir whereas uh, vir um, to, do, to do virome research, they focus on virus, um, um, virus um, um, DNA or virus RNA. That's um, two different um, aspects of the omic research, if I if I can say this. And um, the second question I see here is: Were these flocks consistently healthy flocks over flock? Um, yes, these are healthy flocks, and there were um, there were no um, disease outbreak. So, um, yeah. Okay, sounds good, Edward. So the second question is related to stress pathway that you uh, mentioned. Does the pathway enriched does the pathway enriched match the mechanism of the disinfectants used? Um, very good question. Um. I think so because um, the disinfectant used in this study, um, if we go, oh, if we go back to the methodology, sorry, my computer is a little bit slow.
if we go back to um, the methodology, um, so these substrates um, contain in the in the um, disinfectants, they are um, they either provide uh, oxidative stress or ca or cationic um, uh, or they are um, cationic surface um, agents, which will pose um, um, strong stress to the to the microbes and that will encourage the microbes to minimize um, their uh, um, metabolic me metabolism to overcome this some will some will even form spores to overcome this so um yes I think um the um, um the path the stress pathway match the mechanism of the disinfectants used in the study. Right. Awesome. So the next question is, uh, the USA still runs into Campylobacter issue despite reuse the litter. Any thoughts on this? I, I have, um, I have, I've been thinking about it this uh, I think about this problem actually, uh, this issue actually since day one. <laughs> so, um, my um, opinion is that it's just from me personally <laughs> um, that um, in recycled literature, the in um, ch chicken manure and the litter will mix together, and if there's Campylobacter in one bird, it will, it got the, the bacteria, well, the bacteria got the excreted from the, the bird and the, it would just accumulate or it would just multiply itself in a very ideal um, environment for, for them because it's moist, it's, um, um, it's very um, nutrient, nutrient rich. So if we don't remove that um, litter, it's just a very nice incubator for them to stay on. However, if we, if we remove that used litter and um, that brings, that brings a lot of, a lot of the, um, 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 the um, gut bacteria out, whereas leaving maybe a happy medium amount or a sweet sweet spot to to the surfaces that for the um, birds to to be exposed to. Again, this is just from my not um, mature uh, point of view or thought. We need to, for sure we need to have a look at this. Uh, we need to perform studies on this to see if this is true or not, but it's just an assumption by me. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Always there are next steps for any studies for sure. Great. So Edward, we got some questions about dry cleaning. So another practice between broiler flocks is dry cleaning where litter is removed, dust is blown. Have you looked at this practice? Can you comment on dry cleaning? Um, uh, so far, there, there, um, there are not very, very many studies looked at um, dry cleaning, or like I, like I mentioned, even, even in our the context in the, of our study, full disinfection and water wash. Um, but if you ask me, I would very happy to to perform a study on dry cleaning to see um, if, if we see more differences on the chicken gut microbiome. And um, I, 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 cannot, I cannot give any advice on dry cleaning because we did not do any studies on that. But if given a chance, I would like to perform a study on that as well to see. Yeah, awesome. So uh, there's a comment here, like a suggestion. So it says, great presentation. I suggest including coccidia imeria as a factor in your further future studies. Thank you for, thank you for that. Yes, we would definitely con consider that. Yeah. So the next question is related to disinfectants. Which disinfectants were you using for full disinfection? Um, 
Hi, um, I need to go. I need to take um, I need to take my files to to find mm -hmm. that specific brand name. And um, but I think the disinfect uh, I, I listed the um ingredients of that disinfectants here. That may be that may be helpful. But if you you really are interested in what we used, um, yeah, I can I can go I can go through my files and find you the the brand name. Just just not somewhere in my head right now. <laughs> no problem. So one interesting question, and it is really practical. What was your water temperature during the water wash? It's warm. Uh, it's warm water. It's about uh, we we had the water temperature set about between thirty seven to um, forty degrees Celsius, uh, give or take, because uh, it's in the field and. Um, and we we try to control the temperature, but it's about that range. Awesome. So, uh, did the chicks come from the same hatchery and from an older parent flock or younger parent flock? Um, they came from the same hatchery, that's for sure. Um, but we did not um, chase back to their um to their the the. The condition of their parent flock, but this is a this is a very good question. Yeah. All right. So another question here is: Were these flocks raised conventionally or NAE, like no antibiotics ever? Um, <clears throat> they were not raised. Um. um okay, they were not fed antibiotics. Um, yes. <laughs> okay, sounds good. So the other question is, have you tested or swapped the floors or surrounding surfaces to ensure the impact of water wash on pathogens uh, prevalence? Also, how the water used was treated or disinfected before application or just chlorinated? Okay, so yes, we did. We did do. Uh, we did do um, um, back to uh, a swap um, after cleaning, and um, um, right after. Right after. Oh, sorry. Um, right after cleaning. Yes. So um, we did not find any differences on on salmonella prevalence. Um, Campylobacter prevalence, or um, or any differences on um, the the environmental microbiome. So we did do that part. Um, well, um, yeah. Um, so it doesn't. Sorry. <laughs> let me. Let me. Um, yeah. No worries. Um. This is a very good question. That part is done, and we did not see any differences between the two treatments. Um, so we did not include in this presentation, but um, we had included in the publication as a supplementary document. And um, yeah, more detail can be found there as for the um, bacterial swaps. Oh, and the water and the water. The water is not treated, it's just um, um, safe. Yeah, usually during the flux, you know, producers are treating water by adding, you know, some disinfectants like chlorine or other disinfectants. I think the question was about that. Yes, the yeah. question. Okay, no treatment. Okay, sounds good. So did you monitor bacteria in the local environment of the barns before and after the water wash and full disinfection treatment? Yes, like like I said, we did we did our study. Um, mm -hmm. We have also we have also um, um, swapped the the uh, the feed pans, the water line, and we also have collected the um, 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 the litters. And right right after uh, after cleaning and placement, and we did not find any differences regarding the microbial structure or pathogen prevalence. Okay, sounds great. 
So I would encourage our audience, if you have more questions, please feel free to drop in the Q&A box. So one question for me, I mean, uh, from me, uh, Edward, it's really important for our producers. What's the take home message from your study for our producers? Okay, so um, I, will, I will conclude it in this way. Um, in, in our study, um, it tells us that if your flock is healthy and if there's no previous um, disease outbreak, I will recommend you um, not to fully disinfect your barn um, for the next flock. Reasons being that you, we, can, we may be able to preserve some microbes that's from their previous flock and for the newcomers to develop um, a microbiome sooner. And that's really helpful. That may be really helpful for their gut health. All right, any recommendation about reusing the litter? What's Reuse your... it? Reuse yeah. it? Yeah. Good question. Um, we did not do any research on that, but I did read a lot of publications or a lot of literatures on that. So um, some scientists um, think that using recycled litter may introduce, um, well, I conclude it this way, may overstimulate their immune uh, the chickens the chick's immune system that causes gut inflammation that's one study um and so, so i think it may have uh, adverse effects on chicken productivity but is it a good thing or is it a bad thing during their early age i don't think it's a bad thing because as an animal, their immune system needs to be stimulated and they, the, the immune system needs to be educated. So when, when a bigger disease hit, they are capable, they, they are prepared, not, not like, not like, um, not like um, chickens growing from in a bubble. And when one pathogen hit, they just, when they're older, they just couldn't handle it. And, and die. Sounds good. I've got two more questions. It shows your topic is really interesting. So did you isolate Campylobacter jejuni and did you subtype the isolates? Um, very good question. We, um, we did enrichment assay for um, Campylobacter jejuni, um, but we did not we did not subtype this because um, um, we use some um, quantitative uh, qPCR to do it, and we have um, um, target gene um, to I we use a target gene to identify um, um, Campylobacter jejuni, and yeah, we 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 went on the other route. <laughs> Okay, sounds good. So one question here, uh, if I understood correctly, if there were no differences between the bacterial swabs after each different treatment, before placing flux, how can you be sure that this infectant was applied at correct dose? Um. This is a um, very good. This is a very good question. So, um, we have um, we have used the same protocol to uh, to apply the disinfectants that um, makes our treatments consistent. But um, there is also um, well for um, both for for all 
experiments or or all studies, there's a detection limit. So if if um, the bacterial prevalence is below detection limit, we were not able to see. Well, they they were also they, they they both showed zero, and we were not able to to compare the difference their differences. But over time, they will they will grow, and that below detection zero may grow into something that's a uh, that's that we can observe and that can lead to subsequent um, changes in the chicken gut if i i, I don't know if i answer this question <laughs> um rationally <laughs> so do you think your findings would be applicable in other provinces for example where it is warmer or there is more humid um, good question. Um, I have not thought about the climate. <laughs> um, sorry about that. But um, if I would have to guess, I say yes, it's applicable. We we can we can try. <laughs> yeah, of course. So we need to do trial. Yeah, of course. It's true. So what leader type was used and did you measure the bacterial load in the leader as this is the greatest surface our birds come in contact with? Um, we use uh, wood chip, uh, that's a litter type. And um, we, like I said, we, uh, we did sample the litter and um, before the chick came and after the chick came, the litter microbiome before and after is very, 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 very different, <laughs> as we can imagine. One is when there's fresh litter; the other one is um, manure plus plus litter. Um, but when we compare the two, uh, uh, between uh, between um, full disinfection and water treatment, day zero litter, we did not see much differences, and day thirty litters, we did not see much differences. Right. So can you envision any on-farm testing tools or indicators at present or in the near future in order to assess leader quality from a bacterial community perspective in order to make a more informed decisions as to clean out procedure? Mm, that's very practical and very good question. Um, <clears throat> I will say I will say use uh, use um, qPCR is the fast fastest and um, um, the um, the easiest way, but uh, that that may require uh, a lab if it's on farm. I'm not very familiar with um, the on-farm testing system, how it goes. Um, so I recommend using like I still live in <laughs> live in a bubble, so I rec still recommend using qPCR. You just swab it, and maybe you send to send to your vet's lab, and they I I think they can perform that qPCR there. So were the diets consistent across the study bonds? Um, sorry. Were the diets consistent across the study, study barns in the barns that you uh, you run you ran the trial? Were the diets consistent? Bias. Diets. Diets. Feed. Uh, pi pi. Sorry. So, yeah. yeah, I'm going to repeat the question, Edward. Yeah. Yeah. Were the diets feed consistent across oh. the study barns? Diets, yes, they, uh, they are consistent. They they use the same feeding schedule, um, same feeding ingredients. Yes, it's consistent. All right. So one question here. Do you think your research will eventually lead to increasing birds FCE, promoting beneficial microorganisms? 
Um, promoting beneficial microorganisms. Yes. And, yes. Yeah, of course. And you touched on, you know, gut health, looking at short chain fatty acids and the microbial population. Yes. Of course, it's really, yeah, practical. Mm -hmm. So the next question is in regards to decreasing, I find it, uh, can, I find it can be overlooked referring to its quality. If you do not remove the organic material properly, the disinfectant becomes a lot less effective. Did you connect with any hygiene specialist, the industry? Um, actually this, um... This um, project is um, we we did not contact any um, hygiene um, specialists, but this project is um, like I said we we did a we did this trial with um, our veterinary team, which is um, Dr. Ingalls from the health um, the poultry health services, and um, I I think what we did. Uh, <laughs> Um, as for as for removing the <laughs> remove uh, keeping the keeping barn as clean as possible and the production level should be correct. Yeah, awesome. So it was the last question I got. It was really interesting topic, Edward. Yesterday in uh, poultry AJMs, I saw there was an ongoing conversation between folks about your study. It's really interesting and congratulations.